Okay, so welcome to the webinar. My name is Becky McGratton and I work for a Salesforce Silver Partner in Newcastle. Um, so this is the fourth webinar in our Lightning Fast series. The rest can be found on our YouTube channel if you'd like to catch up. Today we're going to have more of an in-depth look at a big Salesforce feature, which is leads. So we'll report on them and we'll create a quick dashboard. So why we use leads? Um, leads and contact records may look similar, but in the world of Salesforce, they're definitely different. If an account is a business and a contact is a person within a business, what is lead? You can think of leads as a stack of business cards. So if you had a stack of business cards, you'd have some basic information on how to contact someone alongside their name, company, and maybe title, but not much else. So we'll just take a look at our leads here. Um, so you've obviously got your different list views for leads, so we'll just click into all open leads. Um, we'll just click into one so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so the idea um, is that leads will um, follow along a journey. Uh, um, so you've got open, not contacted, working, contacted, closed, not converted, and converted. So in ION, we have a custom stage which is engaged. Um, that's because our leads might take a little bit more nurturing than a straight conversion. Um, but as with most things in Salesforce, this can be customized to fit your business process. Um, so our biz dev guy is called Sean. He lives in the lead section and if he's working them, uh, usually he'll put them in the engaged section. So once he's decided there's an interest or potential future interest, he'll convert the lead and pass it over to the sales team. So we can add details of interactions in our activity bits. So we had a call, put some information in there. Or you can add a task, maybe they want you to phone them back. And then in the details section, you can go in and edit any of the information about them. Um, so if, we're, if we've spoken to someone and they're not interested, we can close it off by clicking close, not converted, and mark that as the current stage. Or if they are interested, or we think they might be in the future, we can convert them. So when we convert a lead, it will automatically create three things, which is an account, a contact, and an opportunity. So, I mean, if they already belong to an existing account, an account you can uh, do that there. Um, and you've also got the opportunity or uh, not create an opportunity um, upon conversion. So if they um, would be interested in future, so there's not an actual immediate opportunity, you could do that, convert them, and then create it as a task. So just unclick that, click convert. And as you can see there, you can create a new task in that button there. So Salesforce, as always, is usually one step ahead of the game. Um, so how does a lead make its way into Salesforce? So leads can find themselves in the system in a variety of ways. So you could manually add a lead. So you would do that here. Um, you would typically only do this if you've only got a handful because it's quite slow adding them one at a time. Um, you can mass import them. So if you click import, it takes you sort of behind the scenes of Salesforce. Um, so if you had a, a spreadsheet, you'd probably change that to a CSV. You just click leads, add new records, and then you can add them in there. So if we had just added one, you would click next, and then it would let you map the fields. So you're matching up like first name to first name, surname to surname, and that's such a thing. Just go back. So other ways you could do it, um, we've got clients that have API integration, so they've got lead gen providers, and that just means the data is coming through in real time. Or you could use a web to lead form on your website. Um, so that means that someone would fill in a contact form on your website, we'd do a bit of configuring in the background, and then it would push it into your leads in Salesforce, so that contact could be picked up by an eager biz dev team immediately. So. I've um, added some test data yesterday um, and this morning as well. Um, so we've got some test leads in, so there'll be a bit more information in this playground. So there's a trailhead playground as usual. Um, there was some test data in it before, um, but there's a little bit more in it now, so I'll just create a report. So the first one we'll do is leads by creative date report. So 
if you will remember reports in Salesforce are really easy because they use this wizard here. So it um, starts walking us through the process and it wants to know what type of report we'd like to create. So in this case, we would like to create a leads report. Um, and I'll just really quickly run you through the anatomy of a report in case we've got any new people on here. So the outline um, here, it's so you can add um, and remove and rearrange your columns quite easily. So it's just drag and drop and you'll see it updates here. So you can also add things like bucket columns and summary formula columns and the outline pane. Um, filters go here. So these allow you to set the view, time frame, and custom filters to limit the data shown in a report. Um, I usually open the filters right up in these demos just because the data is so limited, we don't actually want to um, segment it down any. And then this is our preview pane here. So it's a dynamic preview that makes it easy for you to customize your report. So it's just like a spreadsheet. So you can add, reorder, and remove your columns. Um, the preview will only show you a limited number of records. So if something in your report doesn't look quite right, make sure you run it to see all your results. So I'll just remove all the fields here and I'll add back in first name, last name, title, company, and create date and then I'm actually just going to group by this field change my filters to all leads I want to see all time just so that there's actually something to see in this report and I will save and run so we are calling this leads by create date and I'll just select a public folder and see that. So you'll see here that there are only three created dates available um, because, so for this one here, this was the day that I spun up the trailhead. So that was in February. Um, this was the uh, set of data that I added last night and this here is the set of data that I added this morning. Um, so essentially it just automatically sets the date to when the leads have been created. So if you were in a real org, it would you would have um, a lot more dates probably. So we'll just create another report. And this is another one that's gonna be based on leads. So just as I did before, I'll remove all columns. I mean, you don't have to remove all the columns, but I just like starting with a flat, fresh slate every time. First name, last name, title, company. And we're just gonna sort this by lead status. Just gonna change the filter to all leads, all time. And we will save this one as leads by status. And we'll save that in the public folder. So you can see the status is here. So open, not contacted, and that'll it's uh, not really a coincidence. I added like 200 records over today and yesterday and there's no one in this trial org, so no one will have been contacted. Um, and just move you down. So then work in, contacted, close, converted and close, not converted. And then our last report we're gonna do is an opportunities report. I'm gonna remove all columns again. Account name, opportunity name, amount, expected revenue, and lead source. So we're going to group by lead source, and I'm going to summarize by my expected revenue. Just change that filter to 
all time again. And we're going to save and run as expected revenue by lead source. There we go. And now we shall create our dashboard. So new dashboard, we're going to call this late, oh, leads analysis dashboard. We'll save that in a public folder so that other people can see it, even though it's only me in this org. And we will use our first report to um, be our first widget. So leads by create date. And I'm going to use this line chart here. We'll just add it. So if I had added um, data at more intervals, there would be more data points on this graph. But you can see there that was when it was spun up yesterday and today. So I mean, if you were in a proper organization, it would probably be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you can just use your uh, imagination on that one. And we'll add another component. Um, so we'll do expected revenue. No, sorry, we'll do leads by status. And I'm going to use a funnel widget because we haven't used one of those before. So there you can see the majority of our leads are in open, not contacted. And then expected revenue by lead source. Um, so we'll use a donut for this one. So we'll just move that here. So I will save this and just click done. So if you just look on this one then, so the majority of um, the opportunities don't have a lead source. Um, so I'll just show you if you click into the report you can see here that they've not got a lead source on 141 of them which is why this seems so empty so i'll just show you whenever we change um one of them i'll sort it by the revenue so we'll change a big one so hopefully it'll move it quite a bit so this is right so Use this United Oil one, just open that in a new tab. I'll change the lead source to web. Save that. And when we've gone back to our dashboard there, that's moved a little bit along. So there you have it. That is three lightning fast reports and a lightning fast dashboard. Um, I hope you find this webinar useful. A recording of it will be available on YouTube and our website. As always, any feedback or suggestions on what you would like to see next is welcome.